we have a young man involved here. We want to try to be as fair to him as possible because of the, um, it's easy to make a snap decision, um, which is why we, you know, we did, took our time and we added every part of the thing that we could. The second piece was we wanted to make sure that we weren't making our campus unsafe, right? We weren't introducing something on our campus that was going to create an issue, which is why we spent a lot of time in his hometown talking to a lot of people. Uh, I met the young man. We looked at his police background. There was nothing in there besides this situation. Uh, we got a student conduct record from Knoxville County High School. There was nothing in there uh, that would cause a, a you know, would make you think this is a kid that's troublemaker. That's going to be some of the fun violence on campus. That's why it's also why we put in the, the piece about making sure that we evaluate him. Because we may not find anything in the background, but we want to make sure that, that we have some licensed professionals looking at him and, and helping us stay on top of it and make sure there's not anything there that, that we missed. And so um, that's how I reached the decision we did. Um, once you make the decision that, you know, five seconds of, of action that, that's really poor choice uh, shouldn't preclude that young person then the opportunity to go to uh, a university and, and, and compete. Once you make that decision, the next thing is, uh, besides the counseling, should there be other consequences? And we range from, you know what, he wasn't a student of ours yet, we never disciplined someone before they were one of our students. Uh, should we do that? to you know, long-term game suspensions. I wasn't comfortable doing that because he wasn't a student. He wasn't uh, necessarily in, in, uh, in our program with the structure of discipline and expectations. So we landed on one game. And I understand you can, there can be a lot of discussion about that. People can have other opinions and, and that's fair. But that's where we get landed because I do think it's important that there's a consequence. So in, in, in terms of the, the one game, you say he's going to have counseling. Why not let him go through counseling first and see um, is he need, what, what's his situation? Um, what, what are the licensed professionals that we talk about handle it? Why already say the one game before you even have him back? Well, I think John mainly sent a, a message that there is going to be a consequence. Now, we may get feedback when he goes through this evaluation that makes us adjust that. It's hard, it's hard to speculate what that would be. What message are you really sending when repeatedly punching a woman on the ground gets the same penalty as targeting? Um, what message are you actually sending? Like, it, it's a, this is all you get? It's not that big of a deal? Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, and that wasn't the, that's not how we compared it. You know, we looked at it's what it is. Well, but, but this is a situation where, um, you know, it's, this is not a, a sexual violence issue as defined by law. Uh, we talked to a lot of people on campus. I talked to our dean of students, talked to our Title IX coordinator who investigates sexual It's a man and a woman. I mean, we uh, talked to our president's office, talked to our legal counsel, uh, talked to the conference office. Um, as I said, you can, you can debate that, that's fair. About so the next the player you have who punches a woman, one game? You know, we, we uh, our game of students dismissed a guy who was a starter on the number one team in the country two years ago for a domestic violence. It was a sexual assault issue, unlike this one. So it's, I think you got to look at the situation for what it is, and you can't necessarily just throw a blanket over, the, you know, cookie cutter. It's kind of a point. <clears throat> to, to Andy's point, why try to find the nuance? Like, I'm not down the amount of work that you did. That, that's fine. But why, why even bother with it? Because you know what the reaction is going to be, not just for maybe but plenty of people. Why even try to discover the nuance? Why go one game but all the we can hedge and do something else when the NFL hedged on Ray Rice and that blew up? Why are you even bothering with anything? Why are you trying to discover? Yeah. You owe nothing. To, this person is not on your campus, to your point. You owe nothing to him. It, what, at what point or what act is going to draw a penalty to where you would not allow a signee to come on campus, if not this? Why try to discover it? Well, number one, if it were a domestic sexual assault type issue, if, if this were a person that had uh, a history, I think that's something you would look at. Again, I think you're trying to be fair to the young person at the same time, understand that they made a mistake and they, 
they got to, there's got to be consequences for that. So as long as they but get it, home and they don't know, it'll be a less serious penalty. I'm just, but, I, I, this is, I'm just going by what you're saying. How is this different from a few years ago when you had backup linebacker Chris Hughes arrested and then charged and he missed three games, he suspended for three games for hitting two family members compared to a signee who punched a woman on videotape. How is that different and why is that punishment more severe than say this? Well, I do think there's a, there's a different level. I think Commissioner Sankey mentioned this the other day when he was talking about the, the sexual misconduct. Well, I think there's a, there's a different expectation for someone who's been on a college campus and is in the environment and the structure of what we expect. So the, the your expectation of signees are completely different from when they arrive on campus? Well, we certainly have a different way to monitor and set a level of expectation. Scott, Scott it clearly looks like that this is a five-star recruit. He can rush the pass. That's basically what it comes down to. And my question is, you could have very easily, you guys could have very easily said, look, we're not going to prevent you from going to school, but you can go somewhere else. You're just not going here. Was there a thought of that? Is that ever a thought? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm a, yeah, that's fair. But yeah, we had that conversation. Um, I don't know what that accomplishes. If, if, if the, you know, the young person is going to go to school and he wants to go to, to our school. What well, allows you to stand up and have, this is what we're doing. We're not putting up with this. It gives you a, Actually, you're making the stance. That's that's what was, what was my point with the fact that it really looks like this is a five-star recruit, a guy that can clearly help you, a guy that can rush the passer. And if he was a two-star recruit, would it be the same thing? I can't answer that question. Let's make it work. Doesn't, doesn't it accomplish though the message that this is unacceptable in the Southeastern Conference and Mississippi State? Doesn't it, you say what does it accomplish by saying he can't play here? Doesn't it accomplish the clear standard that? That's an unacceptable thing. You will not be allowed to play football at our university or even more broadly in the Southeastern Conference if you have that behavior. Right. And maybe that does prevent the next kid from doing You know, I go back to what Greg said the other day, which is five seconds of a bad decision that has to be called a videotape when you're 16 or 17. Does that change the trajectory? It only takes five seconds to murder somebody, too. So let's let's get over five seconds. I mean, that, that, that won't happen. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, but, yeah. but to his point, you know. Uh, Scott, I was at Georgia, covering Georgia, still covering Georgia, when Jonathan Taylor happened. He goes to Alabama, it happens again. Most of the time, when somebody does something like this, it's not a one time thing. What, what's your confidence level that A, that is the only time something like that happened, and B, it won't happen again? Well, we don't have evidence of it happening, having happened other times. Um, you meet the young man, you come away with the idea that this is a pretty possible young man. Um, but again, that's where, to me, the evaluation of a licensed professional, not me, somebody who, who knows how to read these behaviors, that's where that comes into play. Scott, what, um, what, what are the procedures for something like this for a, a student who's just any Mississippi State student? I mean, if, if he was not a football player, would Mississippi State have involved him if there's a video viral of a of a incoming student punching multiple times? Well, I'll say this: athletics have nothing to do with the enrollment process. But for for any other student, would so I'm saying athletics in this case did not make any decision related to enrollment. Our decision was based on football participation. So the suspension was the only purview we all had, correct? Sir. So the money that made was the one we used in Dallas. So the suspension was the only purview. That, that in the in the counseling. Okay. Because the, the university, to your point, John, the university uh, would not have, after he'd been accepted, would not have a legal way to tell him he could not enroll, is my understanding. And that's why we had a conversation with the registrar's office. We were not in part of, we were not uh, part of the decision making process there. You know, I know you kind of touched on this briefly a little bit, and a lot of people on Twitter have already said the suspension feels hollow for a true freshman coming in for a one game suspension in South Alabama. Who knows how much he would have actually played anyways. You're um, assuming he's going to play this year. Well, I mean, well, either way, I mean, it's still, it's still just Well, you could have said he wasn't. You know, you know, still just a money suspension. I mean, what are your thoughts to people saying, you know, this is really kind of a hollow, hollow deal is kind of like what Andy said, that it wasn't really a true suspension? I understand different people can have different opinions. 
Scott, Scott. university seriously put itself in a precarious position right here. If he goes and does something again, whoever he does something to could easily sue the university, correct? Because the university knowingly put a guy with a history of this on their campus. I mean, is that, was that something that was thought of? That, that was thought of, yes. So and it's, and it's why the counseling would be a piece of this. How much of this is the thought that people do deserve second chances <laughs> their life comes in at 17 years old? I think that's, at, at, to me, that's where the fairness comes in. Is this a young person who deserves uh, to be treated in such a way where they still have the opportunity? But I, and I, again, I understand the debate. Under, <laughs> under Dan Mullen's watch, with Chris Hughes specifically, his domestic violence charge, he was sitting in a jail cell during the season opener. Then he was arrested later, a couple years later. That showed a pattern of behavior. Knowing Dan Mullen has seen these things up close, did that ever come into play? Knowing what he has seen himself while at Mississippi State? You know, Brandon, uh, I need to be careful speaking generalities. Uh, we, you know, I think I can name on, on one, maybe, maybe, maybe take more than one hand. Dan's been here now seven or eight years. The number of these type situations, and you know, you're dealing with, we all know you're dealing with, uh, you know, a lot of young people where this can happen. But um, I'll be honest, Dan, Dan and I had some limited conversations on this. Dan and I did not have extensive conversations about this matter. Um, you know, I, I, I look to the uh, registrar's office, being a student, Title IX, university lawyers, and then the, the professionals who deal with these kind of behaviors for, for their input. Scott, you said, you said fairness come, has to come into it. Greg told us two days ago that part of the reason the player discipline rule is not gonna get expanded to incoming freshmen is because access to legal records, obviously, is gonna be an issue with minors. How fair is it that he gets treated differently, Jeffrey Simmons, than a transfer because clearly he has a legal issue. It's there for the world to see. And I, don't, I think we'd all agree, and you'd probably agree too, he would not be admitted if he was transferring in because of that specific rule. Uh, I was actually on the student conduct, misconduct committee. Um, I, you know, it's, I think it would be a question mark. This, this would, wouldn't fall under it. I don't, the best, right? I, you know, if you look at the triggers that are in the due diligence, he has two misdemeanors. Simple assault and disturbance of the peace. Um, I don't know that it's questionable. I've looked at that two or three times going through this process. I think it's it's questionable if he were a transfer. He's, he's not a transfer. You know, Greg pointed out there's a different expectation for someone who has kind of been out on their own in a college environment versus someone who is who has never left home. How how much of a consideration is it that if you cut him loose, somebody picks him up tomorrow? That's what the folks at Oklahoma said about. Him. Joe Mixon, I'm assuming you guys have to consider that fact too. Uh, you know, you, I think that thought crosses your mind. For instance, I mean, if you had, if you had assurance that there was some SEC rule or some NCAA rule that if you didn't take them, nobody else would take them, would you then not take them? It's hard to answer that because we don't have that rule, John. John but, but again, to Andy's point, I think you, you consider those things. Scott, where would, all right, what would the president do? How much was? We had several conversations. You, you yourself did, mm -hmm. and um, others were part of that process. When you say others, like senior women's administrators, women's life skills coordinator, uh, dean of students, Title IX coordinator, council's office. Did, did did you talk to any specifically any women on campus who had seen this tape and were really upset, either upset or leery? Of bringing him on campus? I, I talked to several women. Um, I, I don't know that I talked to anybody that fit the description you just said. The, the sense was this was a, you know, this was a, this was a, a, a parking lot fight. We got out of control. And again, it's, which is why it's not, you know, he's not being charged with domestic violence or, or sexual assault. Um, you can't, you can't, that doesn't make it okay. But that's, I think there's, there's it makes it a, a unique situation, a unique case. And Scott, these things, these things never happen in a vacuum. They always happen in the context of where you are now. And we're in, 
we're in a completely different context.